Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the spring 2024 LCS playoffs. It's the first series of our playoff competition, but it's not much of a series so far. Mm. I came in expecting a boxing I... match. Instead, I'm seeing one dude ripping on a punching bag. <laughs> and the yeah. punching bag is wearing 100 Thieves colors. C9 have made them look bad in the first couple of games. And I was very excited for this series. Mm -hmm. I still think there's a chance we have an extremely good series, but these first two games, Cloud9 has knocked 100 Thieves down twice. That's two knockouts, two knockdowns in the round. The, you know, round score is 10 to 8, 10 to 8. They're wildly ahead in this series, mm -hmm. but it's still possible that 100 Thieves could come back. And it's just been so interesting to watch because the hype that 100 Thieves had off the back of their 10 and 4 regular season was so high. And then the trepidation around C9 was very real because of how much they struggled all the way through to week six. But I feel like the edge that's given C9 in this series, they are just completely locked in and showing up. So one of the biggest, most important changes coming into this third game of the series. This is the first time in this one we will get to see 100 Thieves on the red side. You guys talked a little bit about it at the end of last game, about how they were Cloud9 was just saving the last pick for Fudge. They were making it easy for him to run this top lane. 100 Thieves doesn't want it happening this time around. Yeah, and I'm super curious to see what they do with this red side because I was going through their games and on their red side games, they actually don't usually counter pick for yeah. uh, Sniper. Yeah. They actually, um, they've only done it three times. One was the ribbon that we saw in his first ever debut game to right. the LCS stage. Once was Jace and once was Olaf. All the others, it was... Cassante three times where he was just blinding Cassante and then a Renekton pick uh, on four. Mm. So I think it is interesting because historically with red side, this isn't a team like FlyQuest, right? Where you'd yeah. be like, we're saving R5 for some insane counter pick uh, for Sniper. So I'm curious to see what they want to do with that top side as we see the bands come through and the hover of the TF come in from C9. And I think it's just another encapsulation of how playoffs is a completely different beast than the regular season is because in the regular season i think it's much easier to just hammer down power picks and play generally strong team fighting compositions and have success but in playoffs when you're preparing for multiple games against a team on multiple different sides and you're only preparing for one specific opponent you can get a lot more targeted and depth of champion pool becomes a lot more important. If there is a criticism that people have levied against Sniper, it's that he's really good at his picks and outside of his picks, he's not that strong. He even got his picks, but since it's been Aatrox twice in a row, Fudge has been able to prepare all week to go up against it and has succeeded both times. Yeah, nope. and the Kai'Sa coming out, uh, we'll see where the Rel ends up going, if that's going to be River or Ayla. Um, but Kai'Sa is really interesting. I did want to point out that Meech is the AP Kai'Sa enjoyer that we've seen right. in the LCS. So I'll be curious to see if he goes that specific build and what it could mean for their draft going forward for what they pick for their solo lane. Yeah, interestingly enough, we've got the Senna and the Smolder band away. Also, the Lucian from last game, Berserker's presence on it was impressive enough for 100 Thieves to need to ban it out. <laughs> the uh, the Ari hovering, locked hovering the in Vigar. while just sort of being like, hey, I recognize that you guys play all this stuff. So just reminding you it all exists. What do they actually want to go for on C9? We'll see. Again, Jat, you already mentioned the Rel for 100 Thieves is a flex between jungle and support. We'll see yep. where they ultimately want to pilot that. But the bot lane for C9, We'll have Vulcan on the engage, on the Nautilus. Lots of people prefer yeah. seeing Vulcan on engaged champions. He will be doing that again this game next to Berserker's Varus. Yeah. Don't sleep on Vulcan's Nami. 3-0 now. Yeah. Keep that in mind for the next round. That was one of the best solution Nami games you've seen. But as you say, Flowers, a much more standard thing for Cloud9 here. Tons of engage. If they're able to win lanes, it gives them a lot of tools and go buttons to try and bring this one home. And that is a Yasuo. Yeah. Well, Varus is all projectiles. Ari is all projectiles. There's a lot of value you can get out of the wind wall. You've also got Rel immediately for some knockup setup, but that is really surprising to see. Before we even get to the second half of the bands, I'm really excited to see what else they pair with this. <laughs> Do we think there's a chance it's a flex and they could save it top? I mean, I think Quid will probably pilot it, but I am curious to see 
what they do with the Yasuo in terms of, because I'm looking at this draft and yeah. I, on the 100 Thieves side, and I'm kind of like, theoretically, I could not know right. where two of these picks are going. Right, right. I don't think it's a flex only because Sniper in his amateur and academy career doesn't appear to have a single Yasuo game. And we know it's a good, it's an okay matchup against the Ari. So I believe it's going to mm -hmm. be a quick pick. It's going to be his 13th unique champion picked already this split. So he's been an incredibly versatile player for them. And they're using this as I think a little bit of a, a Hail Mary to try and come back in the series. Yeah, as we see, I'm curious to see what, okay, so the Jace and the Grog is coming through as potential sniper yeah. champions that are now banned out by C9. And I think the Gragas is possibly even a uh, jungle ban against River because the mm -hmm. old school combo was Gragas Yasuo. You just walk into lanes, throw yep. your R, boom, wombo combo, get the kill. Easy peasy. Not anymore. All right, so Jason Gragas banned out the Wukong and the Poppy. Both banned away by 100 Thieves. Poppy is really good at shutting down stuff like Rel, like Yasuo. Mm -hmm. These champions are really good at dashing. But hey, you want to talk about easy setups for some yeah. knockups for Yasuo? Alistar is going to be the pick for Ayla. Yeah. It's just a Yasuo comp. You knock him up and you win. <laughs> yup. Nothing to it. Solo Q special. Honestly, if, if 100 Thieves are defaulting to this, where they're like, Quid is our best performing player, yeah. we're going to design a competition uh, composition for him to succeed, I don't hate it. It's, a, it's not a bad strategy. Yeah, but what I think 100 Thieves really need to turn this series around is for Sniper to have something yep. that can beat Fudge's Renekton. Because okay. he has been very poor this series compared to Fudge. I think he has one kill and it was at the tail end of that last game. Fudge has been completely dominant in every laning phase. He's had counterpick both times. Here's Sniper's chance with a lot of top lane bans, right? They've already gotten rid of the Olaf. They've yep. already gotten rid of the Jace. Maybe he goes with something like Aatrox and it's a no, rumble. It's a rumble, rumble it's a pick rumble instead. For Sniper. I like the fact that they got some extra power here for this mid game. The AOE combined with the Rel, the Rumble, Yasuo over the top. There's some serious team fighting power here. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how 100 Thieves pilot this. On the flip side though, Zinjo is something that I actually think Blabber excels at. Mm -hmm. You can play it almost in a carry style while still being able to um, visit your lanes. I really, really have appreciated the way that C9 and Blabber specifically have been tracking River in the early game, really making sure that he can't stop them pushing ahead on the map. Um, and then looking towards topside, I am wondering how this Rumble, if he gets push over lane, how that's going to affect the rest of the map and see if 100 Thieves can play around that. Yeah, the top lane in particular, both of these past couple of games. Game number one with the Aatrox being played at the TF, you would expect Aatrox to be shoved in in that one. But even in game number two, it was Fudge just commanding yeah. leads in the lanes. Sniper is going to have to step up here. All of 100 Thieves is going to have to step up here. But I feel like certainly the comp itself just directs your eyes where to go. It's mid lane, it's Yasuo, it's Quid. The pressure's on for the Thieves. Yeah. It's a 2-0 series for their opponents right now. Now, it's either you win or you're going to the lower bracket. Absolutely. And going in to this final game, I think it's time to zoom out and go a little bit big picture here. Because okay. throughout the regular season, 100 Thieves were the surprise stars. People were thinking, I was thinking, this team was going to be sixth maybe seventh, a fringe playoff team, but they ended up being tied for first at multiple points throughout this, se this season, yet Cloud9 was expected to run over everyone, and we might need to pause because yeah. we're going for Sniper. I think he's okay. Yet Cloud9 greatly underperformed expectations, but there was always this, this edge about them, wondering if they were going to be able to turn it on. All right, and as we wait for the minions to spawn in game number three, we're going to go ahead and toss things back down to Mrs. Chim Chim for an interview this time with Mithy. Minions have spawned. Hey, y'all. I am here with my best friend, Mithy, today. Um, now, y'all have been getting a little bit of flame for the Lucian Nami, but it obviously worked for you in that last game. What about it do y'all see in it, and how is it helping y'all clutch the win? Um, well, we just think they're strong champions, not always in lane, but in the mid game. So. Um, it's just something that is not as easy to execute at first. So it's just been a, about like, you know, trying to make it work throughout the split, which uh, it's not always been easy, but I feel like we're at a spot where we're very comfortable. So it's good. 
Love that. And I saw that Berserker built Voltaic on Lucian. Now, is that something that you recommend for the players at home in solo queue, or was that a Berserker special? I, I think it was just very fed, so he didn't... I mean, yeah. I mean, it was good that game as well. It didn't really have tanks, so it was a, it was a fine item, but nah, normally don't do that. Yeah. Alrighty, thank you so much. And casters, I'm going to send it back to you. Uh, always great to hear from coaches, and they're just like, yeah, actually, don't do that, but mm -hmm. it worked out fine. But it was fine. And I'm really curious to see what happens in this third game here, because I'd say going into the series, uh, Cloud9 had a little bit of an edge to them since they've been underperforming and needing to stay sharp to kind of prove things were going right. Whereas possibly 100 Thieves, and this is a little bit of speculation, but they might have been a little bit satisfied after how well their split had gone and how well specifically that energy game went where they're able to style on them with Sniper getting four solo kills and playing Vagar Shaco as Plapper Plasco is right in the river. But basically now, because that last game was so lopsided in the favor of Cloud9, you can get a little sloppy in this third game. They know they have some lost forgiveness here where they could drop two games and still win the series. But well, Blabber is on to River. Yeah, the problem is Rel does not win yeah. these 1v1s. River trying to get away back to the safety of his team. Blabber marks him on the way it becomes lightning. It's first blood over to JoJo, but it gets traded one for one. Both junglers fall. Buff transfer complete up to Sniper, so. who now has blue buff. Um, but I think the, the thing that was set up by that, not only was River kind of right here hovering, trying to make something happen, but also they, again, have been doing such a really good job of mm -hmm. tracking him. They tracked him uh, at his own red from Fudge kind of getting mm -hmm. in there and being able to see it. Um, so, I mean, I think going forward, I'll be super curious to see, A, how this top side ends up going with now Sniper in a much better position, I'd say, than he's been in the previous two games. <laughs> and then also what both junglers are able to do as we see Vulcan already on a yeah. roam towards mid. They're trying to put Quid in the dirt. Jojo has the red buff as well, which is going to allow him to push Quid even more. Getting his shield off. Vulcan, I think he's here in case there's like a jungle cover and they go for the jungler. I don't think they can actually do a dive on Quid this early in the game. No, there's there's not enough damage there, especially when you consider the Yasuo's got wind wall, right? Yeah. It's just there's a whole lot of risk involved. Jojo's gonna keep trying to push this up. Teleport's still available for both of our mid laners. <laughs> Top lane sniper has ignite as opposed to TP, so that's another thing we'll need to keep our eyes on yeah. as we get later into the game for how it affects the macro state of things. Fudge has already used his teleport to return to lane. So let's see how things are going to continue playing out here with both our junglers in the bottom half of the map. River's kind of just, this feels like one of those missions in an old game where you have to like sneak <laughs> around and follow the, the NPC character. But Blabber is currently I mean, not enough backup from his team to go after the enemy support. There's your lockdown. Uh-oh, 100 Thieves. You're about to lose your support and Berserker's about to get the money for it. Berserker grabs the kill there as JoJo survives with 100 HP back in the mid lane. It was Fudge and River both showing up, trying to make a move. Yeah, and once again, we see a positive play for C9 met with a set play that River was trying to go, avoiding that vision, right? Trying to help out Quid. And so Quid's gonna get pushed over this lane, but they are unable to get that kill onto JoJo. Yeah, and it's looking to be a good Oof. early game for Cloud9. Once again, Blabber, an early start on this Drake. The bot lane massively ahead. I I'd say we've talked a lot about Fudge and Sniper, but Berserker mm -hmm. has really shown up this series. He was very poor compared to his standards in the regular season and has been very good in this specific series. A thousand damage per minute in the first two games. Almost a thousand gold up at 14 minutes in this series early on. And again, a big lead in the third game. First two grubs went over to River and 100 Thieves. Nicely oh, done from JoJo. River ends up giving it away to the second part of the Spirit Orb. JoJo stops 100 Thieves from being able to have full grub control. Let's talk about JoJo's Ari for a bit, right? Because mm, this okay. was the pick when he was on uh, Evil Geniuses, where everyone was like, JoJo can only play Ari. Like, his team <laughs> loses if he doesn't play that. Uh, kind of a similar situation where previously this was a pick that he would hop on that had the the pressure in mid, but also pressure to sides, where he can roam, he can affect objectives. And I am looking forward to seeing more of that from JoJo in the series. Uh-oh, Sniper drops the Equalizer going in after Fudge, but he doesn't realize Blabber's already waiting on him. Sniper, oh man, he even pops the Flash trying to get away there. The 100 Thieves top laner loses both summoner spells and his life. He was not ready for Blabber to be in that brush. And Cloud9 has just been sharper. 
Yep. They're winning all the skirmishes. They're fractionally faster to a lot of these ganks. And these things are decided on very slim margins. Like, River was up there. Yep. He yep. was in the river. He was just half a second slow to that fight. And the Ignite ultimate from Rumble, that power spike is gone now. And Fudge is able to assist in another kill of Sniper. League of Legends is not a game of seconds. It's a game of fractions of seconds. Yes. Yes. And just being there that little bit early is what ends up being able to make enough difference to turn that kill into a freebie. Cloud9 already up one and a half thousand gold at seven minutes in. Game three is looking pretty similar to the first couple of games. Let's take another look at what Sniper thought he had. Yeah, so he does not see Blabber. Oh, so the pet. He, he gets him visible. with that. It looked like he got him with that one minion, but maybe not have yeah. noticed. Could have been a spectator bug because it was for a fraction of a second. And he just goes straight in as the once you flash done with the Renekton ultimate, you're able to, to pick him up. Yeah, and I think the big thing coming out of Blabber's kind of lane coverage is, again, this is a really great style to see from Blabber in terms of he is able to affect his lanes. They're doing such a good job of tracking River. River yeah. is not able to set anything up, even when they think they have the setup and they have evaded vision and they think they have the play. Um, and like you said, C9 has just been sharper across the map and it's paying off in not only a gold lead, but again, Blabber has also been first to that Drake every single mm -hmm. game off of any amount of bot or mid pressure they've been able to have. And 100 Thieves really need to get one of their solo lanes going. It's how they generated wins in the regular season. Either it would be mid jungle or it would be mid top. But in every game, they haven't been able to get oh. it. And again, JoJo walks away from a gank. It wasn't just a gank. It was a shattering strike flash attempt from River that just didn't find the target. You could see what he wanted to do, but miss execution on the mechanical aspect means JoJo doesn't even have to spend his own flash to get away. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty, it's, pretty it's good, going JoJo. Well for C9. Unless you're River, then it's uh, pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty bad. Not. Oh, Blabber is back no up flash. top side. Oh boy, Sniper. Yeah, no summoner spells to get away from this one. It is pretty easy to hit that third three talent strike. Fudge picks it up with the Cole the Meek. And I just feel like the entire map is collapsing for 100 Thieves. And when I think of Blabber in lanes, I really do think of him going top side, right? Like earlier, mm -hmm. we saw it this year with the Nidalee Renekton combination. But even previously, when Fudge was in his his first season as we were comparing his first season to snipers earlier today um that was how like fudge would essentially stack waves blabber would be there they would get ahead on top side and that would be their in uh towards the early game on the top side of the map as mm -hmm. blabber and jojo versus river and quid now the problem is jojo doesn't have a lot of mana left to work with 100 thieves that might be the angle they could find here Windwall goes down Blabber knocked up by Quid, but that's not the target they would want to focus if they continued this charm again. Just flies out, hits the minion. 100 Thieves still with control here. Blabber sidesteps away from the potential knockup on the tornado. About 30 seconds until the Drake spawns. 100 Thieves would like to maintain river control, keep JoJo locked here in this lane long enough to do something about it, but JoJo's teleport is about to be up. It will be available here in, yep. what's the timer? 15 seconds. The Drake also spawning at about the same timer, so JoJo will be able to take a back and reset. Blabber's coming in. Quid saw the angle, but Blabber saw it too, and that just makes it all too easy for C9 to make the counterplay. JoJo and Blabber are so on point right now. They had a couple options there. They could just delay until a teleport is back up, then move in for the dragon, but they got Quid's condition bad enough that they could actually just go for another kill and it'll make this dragon uncontestable. There has probably been like maybe a minute in this entire series where a single lane for 100 Thieves was consistently winning. Like the bot lane has been pushed in the entire time. It feels like JoJo and Blabber have consistently clapped quit on the back foot. And Sniper seems like it's almost impossible for him to get a kill. So now JoJo teleports back in with items and they go for more. Ayla is the one getting jumped on first. But the Alistar is pretty tanky, not tanky enough. Vulcan's got the kill here at the start. Blabber keeping alive with the ulti, but he's about to drop. Shutdown goes over to quit, but Fudge River's here. on the run. Berserker's still shooting and Fudge has made his way in from the back. The Dominus is ready to rock and roll and Berserker takes down River. It's another fight going the oh. way of C9. It's another follow-up kill in the back end. This game three is looking just like the first two. I was looking at that order and I was like, oh, Fudge is coming in, Fudge is coming in. They didn't even seem to need him no. in that fight. That's the best feeling as a team when you have extra resources that you don't even need. You could see 100 Thieves 
just need something to happen so they go in for the Yasuo ultimate. But with the timing of running back from base, they've already lost Ayla and Berserker is untouched. Lethal Temple Varus hitting the entire time. And Fudge, the only contribution he makes to this fight is this final stun on Dequid after the charm has land. So what is that goal lead now? 4,000 at 12 yeah. minutes. The early games have been absolutely disastrous for 100 Thieves, and Cloud9 has won every skirmish. Look, man, I don't mean to be a downer here, but I don't even know what you do as 100 Thieves to try to come back from this much of an avalanche early yet again. It feels like yeah. you're relying on a C9 mistake. They will grab that Drake, so at least C9 won't be stacking towards the soul yeah. for free this time. Yeah, and that actually is pretty important because they do stop that super fast Drake stacking that C9 has had in both series, being able to get that off of kind of the reset that happened uh, after the previous fight. <laughs> um, it's still not looking great. No, definitely not. And 100 Thieves, if they do lose this series, again, are not eliminated from playoffs. It will just knock them down into the loser's bracket. They will then play on the weekend, so they'll have... Yeah a short amount of recovery time before their next series. If Cloud9 wins, they would have their next game next week in the winner's bracket final. Look how unafraid Blabber is. He's just like, yeah. He's so strong. It's fine. Yeah. Like, I can deal with whatever you guys You're going to duel out. the Knight's yeah. Vow dude with your Sundered Sky any day yeah. of the week. Oh, absolutely. And then the only champion that can do meaningful damage to you is the guy that can be most likely shooting you from outside your ulti range, so you just disengage and walk away anyway. Yep. I mean, if you die to Alistar and Rel both punching you for 40 damage one time <laughs> per second in the face, you've probably got bigger problems, and I don't think C9 have those kinds of problems right now. I, I gotta ask, though, <laughs> where has this Berserker been? Where has this Fudge He been? was scaling up. Fudge is in some trouble. Sniper going after him, but JoJo's yeah. right there. That is so heartbreaking for Sniper, but it feels so good for Fudge and for JoJo. And this is exactly what JoJo's Ari can do, right? He set up that roam, was already pathing topside when they realized that they might be able to get that kill or that Fudge might be in trouble from Sniper being able mm -hmm. to, to ult and possibly solo kill him. So again, like this is something that Jojo has made abundantly clear he wants to work on as a player. Just mm -hmm. get better about seeing the map, about being a kind of in-game leader for his team, not only through like actual shot calling, but through plays on champions oh. like Ari, where you can just affect solo lanes as we go in on bot side. Three-man dive on Berserker. That time they've got enough to get it done. Meech gets the kill critically 100 thieves getting some money on a carry okay really really big because he was heavily yeah. down the kaisa needs to be strong enough to basically one shot backline like that's mm -hmm. how this composition is going to work for 100 thieves they'll get a rel or an alistair knock up then the yasuo suspends the kaisa alts in and they get the one shot so getting that bounty actually really really important it's probably not enough but it's nice to see 100 thieves still fighting yeah and i mean that is It's a very young team. They're very fun in terms of, we've talked about their combined kills per minute. Mm -hmm. We've seen that today. Most of those kills have been on C9 side, but we've seen a lot of bloodiness, a lot of fighting. They are very willing to fight. Maybe not necessarily when they should mm -hmm. at times. <laughs> uh, maybe they don't, they don't have itemization or their comp isn't online yet, but um, I do really appreciate that about this team because they will continue to look for flips. They will try to look for windows where they can make flick picks or get team oh, fight wins. He's he's uh he's dead. Yeah. Fudge wants yeah. this one and Sniper does not. He'll try to walk away from it, but no, <laughs> his, dude, he's just gonna die to that Renekton Wait, Sunfire Cape ulti. 2017 Samsung? What's the significance there? Chat? Uh I want chat chat needs to tell us, but okay. <laughs> there's something to it. I just don't know what it is. That his little Zoomer brain has, because he was <laughs> he was ten his when that little team was. Zoomer brain. <laughs> he was ten when he spammed that I when that icon was oh made. Oh my gosh! How do we know he'll even remember? I don't remember anything from when I was ten. That like, part of my mind just doesn't work. So like, Core JJ won that world championship. 
Okay. There's some yeah. connection. That's for the future, but that okay. was straight. All right, all right. Maybe, maybe we'll figure it out. JoJo lands a charm on Quid, takes half his HP as JoJo and Blabber try to get away. But the wombo combo comes down on Blabber. Oh, he good. uses the ulti to stay alive. Nicely done. Blabber's oh. still getting away. The power of Zinjo's defensive ulti and now 100 Thieves trying to get Ayla and River out of the fight, but it ain't going to work. Punch goes on the rampage. And Ayla goes down, making a three for nothing for C9. They thought that Blabber was trapped with them, but they were trapped with Blabber. Eight Thousand gold lead, 17 minutes in. Just an absolute schlocking yeah. that, that Cloud9 is putting on to 100 Thieves. This is their statement series for how questionable their regular season has been. People had been flaming them for picking winning lanes and not being able to convert to victory. But these three games have probably been the three best games they have played as a five-man unit. Watching this one more time, Blabber is flexing his golden item advantage. <laughs> it starts 2v3, but ends completely in the favor of Cloud9. Yeah, and it looks kind of good, right? Because you're like, oh, they're getting a little bit of damage on them. The Rel Engage comes off. We're like, okay, maybe we have Blabber locked down. Nope. And then here comes, once again, <laughs> Renekton TPing across the fight. Um, Fudge can just absolutely go through and chew at their back line. They have no answers for him or Blabber right now. And I really love the way that Blabber plays it because he uses his audacious charge after he pops the ulti to get far enough away from Quid that Quid can't chase. So now it's just two mm -hmm. meatballs and yep. Meech. Then he flashes away from Meech. All that's left is two meatballs. Blabber does not care about either of these guys. It ends up working out beautifully. And now he's just stealing away more chickens. The man is running <laughs> the map. Eight and a half thousand gold lead, two drakes to one. The grubs don't really matter that much. It's three grubs that doesn't really matter. But man, what an absolute show of dominance from C9 in this game thus far. 4-0 and 6 for JoJo's Ari. 4-0 and 3 for Fudge's Renekton. Jet, you were bringing up previously in the series how the solo lanes have got to step up for 100 Thieves because that's yeah. how they found wins. Right now it's a 1-2 and 1 Yasuo, a 1-4 and 0 Rumble. That is not the recipe for success. Yeah, absolutely not. When we were scouting this series out, we're thinking, how can it how can it break? Mid, 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 because Quid's an MVP candidate. Yep. A lot of people think JoJo's the most important player on Cloud9. What's happened there? Blabber and JoJo have won by a landslide, but I think the things that have made this series so one-sided is the fact that Fudge has also completely outclassed Sniper, and Berserker has been him. Right? Berserker has not been him in the regular season. My opinion, he's not going to make first, second, or third team all pro. He might, but his actual performance in the split was not that strong. However, the quality of player he is, people still don't necessarily doubt that, and he is absolutely turning it on this series. So you'd say in the series, he's much closer to the faker side of that graphic than the, than the Raz From side. last week, yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, okay. it's more about he's just, like, he is... He has presence in this series. Yeah. He's consistently pushed up. He's staying safe. He's being the one to deal the first bit of damage in the team fight. Even going back to game one with Senna, way better soul stacking, huge chunk damage in the mid game. The Lucianami game, signature. Builds whatever he wants to do, <laughs> rapid fire cannons them in the mid lane. And then here with Varus, yes, he has that one death, the one misstep, but overall they dominate the lane, they kill the turrets. He's gonna be that ticking time bomb of auto attack damage Varus at the end of the game. Everything is just clicking for Cloud9 here. For me, it's about how they've translated that to objectives, right? Yeah. We've talked about how Blabber is at Drake, almost at spawn off of that bot side pressure mm -hmm. that Berserker and Vulcan are generating. Even earlier in this game, we saw Vulcan going for those super early roams, understanding roam timers off of what they can do from bot side pressure. And I think if there's something that impresses me way more about this C9 team, it isn't necessarily an individual performance, but it's how they're translating their actual advantages to objectives and really stifling anything mm. that 100 Thieves wants to do around the map. And I like that you're bringing up objectives and playing around the map, because now we're getting to the point of the game where since this Rumble Ignite didn't work out, it's yeah. gonna be a big disadvantage going forward, not having that teleport for the side of 100 Thieves. JoJo's still dashing around here with a Spirit Rush, looking for any kind of an angle. Really There's the charm, it. find Sniper, quick chunk of damage, but nothing they want to commit to just yet. 
It's an NA ram, boys. All five mid, both sides. Let's see how it rolls. Fudge is walking down towards the bottom lane, and this is what I'm talking about. C9 yeah. can afford to do that because they have the extra TP. Then if a fight breaks out back up here, boom, Fudge can rejoin while applying pressure to bottom at the same time. I really feel like Hunter Thieves is just hoping that something weird happens because they are down 9,000 gold, and they need a one-shot to start this fight. Well, the equalizer... Unfortunately, was a little weird. It doesn't find a whole lot of success there. Just zones Cloud9 over to a part of the map they already felt safe on anyway, since yeah. they knew that 100 Thieves weren't setting up any kind of a flank in that bottom side river. Fudge already has the tier two turret down in the bottom lane, so another victory going the way of C9 as Blabber pushes up yet oh, again, geez. invading for the red, but Vulcan and Jojo are also nearby. They've got a ward that forces 100 Thieves all the way back out of their jungle. Yeah, what a show of dominance from C9, right? Like, Fudge is just taking towers bot side. He's now TPing top, going to push out that top side wave as well. And like you said, this TP advantage gives them absolute side lane control as well. We, they were reading those Reddit comments where they're like, I don't think C9 knows what a side lane is. Well, guess what? They learned, and they've been showcasing that prowess over side lanes in not only this game, but the rest of the series as well. And I think this is going to make the rest of playoffs even more interesting. Like, yeah. Cloud9 was so lackluster during the regular season. But this is, with this, I I'm going to say with this series win, if they close out this game, it's more of a statement than just a win, right? right? Mm -hmm. These have been three incredibly dominant games for Cloud9. Now, whether or not they can sustain this, since, like, literally, this is one day of data. We yes. have, like, six weeks of regular season data where they weren't this. So this isn't necessarily like, oh, yeah, they did this series. This is always going to be them. That's Cope. They need to have <laughs> a way of showcasing this level of performance as they move throughout playoffs. Then they'd be able to get that championship. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Nick Jersey. Oh, Meech. Oh, nicely done there with the Charmy oh. flashes back in to finish him off with the Foxfire. JoJo just knows how to pilot this champion the right way, man. 5-0 and 6 on the Ari. 11 out of 15 kill participation, tied with his own jungler for highest KP on the team. And now with the Baron buff, with the 5v4 advantage for the next 20 seconds, C9, I'd say they're knocking on the door, but they'll just kick the damn thing in. 100 Thieves can't say anything about it. This first inhibitor likely to fall with no contest. The minion waves aren't in a spot just yet to translate that pressure to the sides, but Fudge is quickly working to remedy that. He'll knock down the remaining tier two turret up there in the top lane. It is a seven to zero turret count this game. I'm kind of curious, how many turrets have 100 Thieves got in this entire series? Mm, I'm, we can check the stats on that. I'm gonna guess it's about two. Yeah. The first game, maybe three, because the first game was definitely the closest, and then they have been increasingly more Cloud9 favored. Uh, I'm also curious to check the stats afterwards, how many solo kills Cloud9 have. Well, this that one count as a solo Ooh. kill, but it sure yeah. feels like one. That one's not quite a solo kill, but just the extra little bit of lockdown from Vulcan makes it easy for JoJo to get that extra kill. Now, Sniper dead for 30 seconds. 100 Thieves still trying to defend. JoJo might be ready to recall here, but Ayla goes in for the flash. Pulverize, 100 Thieves looking to make their move. Finally, they need the first thing up, Berserker. Vulcan still staying alive somehow, but Fudge is in the back, and Meech is already dead. 100 Thieves, that was their last best oh. shot, and they didn't shoot straight enough. Blabber still looking to chase down Quinn with the wind becomes lightning as River runs from JoJo. I like the fact that they went for it, but they just were too far behind. C9 comes out into the playoffs and makes a statement. The statement being, they're ready to play. 100 Thieves doing everything they can, trying to hold on at the very end. But C9 makes quick work of them. They don't even need to pad the stats. They'll take down the Thieves, 3-0. And this is the C9 we've been waiting to see. Again, Blabber's jungle control. Blabber and JoJo working together as this formidable mid-jungle duo that making the most off their bot side pressure with Berserker. Like, this was so amazing to see from this team, and it blows playoffs wide open. When Jack assembled this roster and saw that he had three different players that won MVPs and had 13 individual LCS titles between the players, these are the performances he was hoping to see. They have been absent until today, but I am willing to say that Cloud9 is in fact back.
They sure looked like it, man. And I like the you guys already talked about it. This wasn't just, oh yeah, they 3-0'd them. This was, damn, they 3-0'd them. Yeah. And for 100 Thieves, you can see they're a little bit shell-shocked. They can't help but smile a little bit because they just got welcomed to the playoffs. They need to recover and get yeah. back to what brought them to second place in the first place later this weekend where they have been knocked down to the lower bracket now and will be facing elimination. That's the thing, yeah. right? You do get the second life, but only a second life. There is no third. For 100 Thieves now, they'll be fighting to stay in playoffs for the rest of the competition. For Cloud9, Jat, you mentioned it really quickly earlier. They're now one series away from going to MSI. Yep. Yeah. Just yeah. like that. Just like Just that. Just like that. Just like way, that. For as bad as they were in the regular season, like, they were still third place. <laughs> yeah, like... Well, it's just, it feels bad compared to what everybody's expectations yeah, yeah. were, where they just run the entire league. There's been so much parody. There's been so much craziness in the regular season that for Cloud9 to now come into playoffs, show that kind of strength, that dominance that we were expecting, I think that 100 Thieves aren't the only ones with a little bit of whiplash. Yeah, I mean, it's expectations, but it's also like actual execution, right? Because we saw, I know people have been hypercritical of C9's drafts. They've been hypercritical of the Lucian Nami, which is something we've seen work in other regions, but in, in NA, no one's really been able to pilot it well until, I would say, today. Like, yeah. even C9's other Lucian Nami performances were not as dominating and as, like, prescient as this one. So I think it's not just that, oh, this is a super team, we expected more from them. This is such a statement 3-0 victory where they had complete control over every single game. Really impressive stuff from C9 to kick off our playoffs. And a reminder, Fantasy LCS is happening over on Sleeper, so make sure to lock in your picks and bands for next week's games if you want to top your league. And now we're going to head on over to the LCS Lounge to break it all down. Hey, y'all, let's make some noise for C9. Congratulations on y'all's win. Now, I have with me the burn book of LCS, which means that every LCS player gets to write some trash talk after a little win. Mm -hmm. So, first and foremost, we're going to look at y'all's pages. What's happening here? Oh, no. And I want to hear what I have to say. OK, so Fudge, for you, we've got Fudge non-factor. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say to that? I mean, I can understand why people were saying that. My, my, my performance in the regular season was not so good. But uh, nowadays, I don't think people will be saying that. So You kind of ate today. I'm not going to lie. You I ate. ate. Yeah. yeah, you ate. <laughs> and Berserker for mm -hmm. you, what I want to point out is Timu Gumayushi. What do you what's, have? What's to... Timu? Uh, like Timu off is like, brand. Like, like uh, a bad, bad. Bad Gumayushi? Yeah, basically. Oh, basically, shit. basically. But, you know, regular season, it doesn't matter, you know? Only, like, playoff is matter, so I don't care. <laughs> oh, period. Absolutely. So now I'm going to need y'all to put something in here for your opponents today. Fudge, uh, can you do the honors of writing something? Do you have the uh, marker? Oh, here we go. Beautiful. <laughs> can it's you time, write Fudge. something for Sniper today? How did you feel about his performance? You can see my handwriting. Not fraud. Oh, my gosh. So are the, is it confirmed? They're frauds? I think 100 Thieves are most definitely frauds after this series. I think everyone can see it. Um, yeah, I, I think TL and FlyQuest are definitely better, and uh, it's going to be proven in playoffs. Period. And so now I just need you to write something for Meech. Meech. Yeah. How is Meech, Bazooka, this series? Who is him? <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I guess that wraps it up, y'all. This is a chapter closed. C9 has taken on 100 Thieves and bested them. And I guess they're frauds. Frauds. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I'm going to send it over to the analyst desk. Thank you, Miss Chim Chim. Cloud9 are back, and so is Vulcan. Back again! You win some games, so now you get to be happy. The high school bully. To, uh, I think it's the first time this year that I get to be here or have an interview. Get to be happy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. whoa. The, the real question is, how long are you going to be back for this time? Yeah. All the playoffs? It's been Cloud9 are back. Oh, it's doomed. Um, well, it's we have so two over. lives. We're we back. have two lives, right? Like, yes. in the upper yeah. bracket, yeah. so we yeah. might just mess around and, and go down there to see what happens. Just check out Zero the lower bracket. for yeah, content. Yeah, it's over there. Yeah, that's a good idea. How does it feel, though, coming off this series? Because obviously you've had a really good LCS career. 
But let's be honest, last year was not what you expected. Uh, with FlyQuest, there was crazy expectations there. That didn't really work out. So I know, obviously, you guys will be getting you know attacked for that, going to be getting flamed for that. Mm -hmm. Then you come to the Cloud9 Super Team, everyone's like, all right, with this roster, you win the championship or, or nothing, basically, right? The expectations are sky high. And the season hadn't been going how, how you wanted. You guys had, had a rough couple of weeks there. So how does it feel now to maybe be like a little bit vindicated, you know, and be able to showcase what you guys have been working on on stage? Yeah, it definitely feels good. Uh, I'd say that my team was absolutely smurfing today. Uh, yeah. And I still think that image, individually, like there's a lot of moments where I should hit the free skill shot and it flies past the, the, the champion for no reason. I'm like, I'm not cringing hit at myself in the so hard. With the Nami bubble. Yeah, I was, I was hitting the crowd. That I think they got scared. I think they, they left the first row because they didn't oh, want to get yeah, hit anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I still have like some work to do to find myself again. I feel like I'm in a bit of a slump, but it feels good that like my team was smurfing so hard and I was doing my job. And even though you know I had those mistakes, I feel like I was still participating in the game and, and making sure that we're aligned and doing the correct thing in the game and snowballing and stuff. So. Uh, feels good to to have C9 be back, yeah. And these were, it felt like, the best games you've had this split uh, as a team. My question is, like, after the break, you guys felt, like, a lot more succinct on the same page. What did it take for you guys to actually find that? Well, I guess, like, the people call it, like, wake-up calls when you lose on stage, right? And you have these disgusting games that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, just know that they happen twice as much in scrims, too. So, like, it happens, <laughs> happens a lot. We get a lot of wake-up uh -huh. calls every day. Lose is improve, <laughs> and you're improving a lot. <laughs> We're improving a lot, yeah, a lot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just the wake-up calls. I think we have a good coaching staff behind us that, that pushes us and, and calls us out when, um, when we do bad things. And I, I see a bit of uh, people talking online about how Mithy is a terrible coach, but I think he's probably the best coach I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very unfair when people criticize Mithy when they don't even know exactly what he brings to the team, right? Talk, and, talk to us about, about draft then, because I know this is something that I think uh, there's a misconception with fans, where fans think the coaches always drive the fully draft. How does it work in Cloud9? Is it mostly Mithy driven? Is it like you and him and you know the players and, and coach talking back and forth? Is it mostly player driven? It's definitely, definitely a collaboration. Like, yeah. we'll sit there on the couch before game day, have a draft meeting for one hour plus, and we'll just try and figure out what we want to play, like look at what happened in scrims, what works best for us. Um, and yeah, if there's like a disagreement, uh, generally, Mithy will be the person with the last say. Like, if the conversation goes on, we can't find uh, a middle ground or an understanding that Mithy will be the one to to decide. But otherwise, no. Like, drafts are always very, very influenced by players, both because of picks they can play, and you know yeah. what their their vibes, what they want to play, what they're feeling. So, what yeah. do you feel like Mithy does better than than other coaches? You know, because he he is a former player, but now we have a lot of like former player coaches. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's that, the fact that he's a former player. Also, for me, it helps that he was a support, right? Because sometimes he has, yeah. like, these little bits of, of maybe a matchup or, or stuff in the game that I could have done better because he's been there before. Mm -hmm. And I also think that he's pretty smart, or, like, compared to your average esports <laughs> or League of Legends person, he's pretty smart uh, emotionally. Uh -huh. So he's able to, like, read the room. And, and everyone in esports is a genius. Yeah. So, like, he's even... That's yeah, really good. good. That's what I meant, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like Albert <laughs> Einstein of, of the course. modern age. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 be careful. Emotional uh, intelligence yeah. off the charts. Better watch yourself or we'll start some more flame. Uh, <laughs> Player of the series for this one is Fudge. Boom! Fudge nice. was going crazy in this one in the top lane. I don't know how much you guys watched uh, all the stage games from Sniper in the regular season, but Sniper got seven solo kills on stage last week. He was obviously coming really hot into this series, and Fudge was pretty incredible. Yeah, and I saw Sniper popping off, but today, I mean, there was nothing much going on. There was not right. much popping I'm off. pretty sure Fudge made them choose red side. <laughs> and they're like, well, please, we have we have to do something about uh Yeah, they want to catch up. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I, I want to ask, or sorry, go ahead, Raz. I was asked, I was asked, uh, I was going to ask about like the Twisted Fate pick a little bit, because at least after the break, we started to see like Renekton get picked, a little bit more carries in the top side of the map, and like Blabber start to play towards top side. What has been the shift in general? Because at least the expectation with Cloud9 is like, Blabber's pathing towards bot lane. Like that he's going to be helping you guys a little bit more. Has there been that change in how you guys talked about incorporating top lane? A little bit, yeah, because we've noticed how some of our drafts, we weren't uh, playing through a lane. Like, we were drafting in a way where we don't have probably top, we don't have probably bottom. It's very hard for Blabber to jungle uh, when that happens. So we've been going, like, when we're red side, generally we'll try to get Fudge in a comfortable matchup where he can push his lane. Or yeah. if we don't need it because we have Pryo in other lanes, then maybe he'll pick something more for comp. Uh, but there's definitely these cases, like this TF game, which we've been practicing for a pretty long time. I think it's the first time we pulled it off there. Yeah. But we were practicing it for a long time, and. Um, yeah, I mean, we trust Fudge to be able to perform. Like, it, that TF game was super easy to play for him. It doesn't have threat for him. He just walks up gold card. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, he, he played very well in lane, so. Yeah. yeah. Blabber was smurfing this game, too, getting so much pressure. Yeah, Blabber played a really good series. Now we have the bracket. Obviously, you guys won today, so you're going to be in the winner's bracket moving up. Tomorrow, we have FlyQuest versus TL. 
Who do you think is gonna win, and who would you rather play, like if you could actually pick today? That's a pretty tough one. I, yeah, I mean, from scrims, I would say that TL wins, but uh, like the past, TL always performs better in scrims than they do on stage. Yeah. So maybe FlyQuest does pull through. Um, and maybe I would rather also play them because I think TL Balling is actually probably the best in the league, even though they have a pretty, well, not that great of a regular season. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, I think they're, at least in scrims, I mean, the same thing again, but like, yeah. they're good. All right, so if TL are number one, where does FlyQuest bottom lane rank? Um, well, they're good in the sense Where that they'll play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're good in the sense that they're willing to play, especially Busio, he's, he's willing to play like a lot of different things. So yeah. it can be annoying to draft against. But I think because of their lack of experience, it's pretty comfortable mm -hmm. uh, to play on stage against them because they won't push or maybe they won't play out the situations that they find themselves in the best way possible. Um, so on stage, I'm pretty confident, confident going against them. It's interesting that you say that you feel like the bot lane is the best in the league from Team Liquid side because they get a lot of criticism, at least um, um, Jan in particular. What do you see within that Team Liquid bot lane that sets them apart from the rest of the teams? I think when they have a winning matchup, they're really good at like pushing it to the limit and, and making it very hard, like forcing you to not make a mistake, otherwise you'll be very punished. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, Core JJ is Core JJ, right? He's obviously a super smart player. Um, and yeah, I think they just push their advantages very well. Nice. All right, well, FlyQuest is playing tomorrow, and if you are in the studio tomorrow, uh, FlyQuest says if you find Basil Leaf, you could get a necklace. They're giving out some FlyQuest necklaces, so you could be a lucky recipient of that if you are here tomorrow. Uh, but that is going to be us it for us. Thank you so much, Vulcan, for joining. Congrats again on Thank the big guys. win, 3-0 for Cloud9. They crushed it, but we will be back tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, Pacific, excuse me, for Fly versus TL. Now let's send it over to Palafox's stream. See you there. Welcome to the LCS playoffs. It's time to kick things off here on this lovely Thursday afternoon with the upper bracket. C9 going against 100 Thieves. Both junglers hanging around. Hey, hey, nice side for Chunk coming out. And Quinn is dead. It's first blood over to JoJo. Hey. for the 1v1, like even sacrificing his lane at times Ooh, to be able uh, to as I think he's dead. Oh! Yep. Jojo Pune with the solo kill in mid lane. Despair on Fudge. Quid still getting jumped on though. He's trying to get away. He escaped and just barely survived thanks to Ayla and the shield. Mob Ooh. comes in over the top, but Sniper's already in the dirt. River tries to flash over the wall. Crescent Guard to knock a target back away. Fudge is still gonna just kite him out and Vulcan gets the kill. C9 pick up two. Wow, this is Senna. Nice shot, guys. Hey, hit, hit the time. We need to hit dying. Berserker. Oh, Berserker, not again, please. We need to peel our minions. <laughs> guys, let's end the game. Get the minions in. Hit, 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 hit. Yeah, we got it, we got it. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Two more, guys. Light Vigil doesn't hit a damn thing. Blabber spinning, C9's winning, and there ain't nobody wow. on 100 Thieves gonna stop him. Holy cow, four dead bodies in 100 Thieves colors. <laughs> and that entire sequence was C9 ego. Yep. They didn't need to do that to win this game, but they wanted to do that to win this game. Nice flash, nice shot. Look, 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 look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look here, look here. Oh my god, Jojo Pew. Oh my god, Jojo. Okay, but not over. Okay, but not over. Okay, good job, guys. Oh, I'm nah, sorry. That's over, guys. It's okay. Go and get overconfident, guys. Now, Jojo teleports back in with items and they go for more. Ayla is the one getting jumped on first, but the Alistar is pretty tanky. Not tanky enough. Vulcan's Whoa. got the kill here at the start. Blabber keeping alive with the ulti, but he's about to drop. Shutdown goes over to Quid, but Fudge's River's here. on the run. Berserker's still shooting, and Fudge has made his way in from the back. The Dominus is ready to rock and roll, and Berserker takes down River. C9 comes out into the playoffs and makes a statement. The statement being, they're ready to play. Wait, just, just kill them, just kill them. Yeah, 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 yeah kill them. Nice, C9 is back. Nice job, guys. Oh, C9 is so good, guys. Clean win, boys.